Hello everyone, this is your host, your friend, your boy, Jetblack, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. This is a sequel to my Death Note-inspired AI Dungeon 2 speedrun, where I played as a detective, and I tried to stop a murderer who was using a mysterious journal that kills anyone whose name is written in it in 30 minutes or less. I was able to get the murderer to confess, but throughout the AI Dungeon 2 adventure, the AI came up with this really interesting idea where the murderer is actually a vampire slayer, and they're essentially using the journal in order to kill vampires. And one of the fans of the channel reached out to me and said, hey, I think you should do a sequel where you keep playing as the detective, but you've taken the journal and you've learned that the murderer was right and that he is killing vampires. Like he's not just like a crazy dude who thinks he's killing vampires. He actually is a vampire slayer, but now you've become the new vampire slayer and you have the journal. So in this episode, I'm going to be playing as the detective and I'm going to be trying to figure out the name of the king of vampires so that I can kill him. The only issue is that the journal actually attracts killer vampires to me and I'm face to face with the king of vampires who's actively trying to kill me and destroy the journal. So I hope you guys are hype. What I'm going to do is read the last action from the previous episode and then I'm going to read the additional blurb of text that I added to establish this new scene. Then I'm going to start the 30 minute timer and we'll hop right into the speed run. So, without further ado, let me read the last action from the previous episode. You say, Tell me then, are the vampires you slayed the murder victims? You can be honest with me. You can tell that Throtar is having a breakdown. You need to exploit his moment of weakness to get him to finally say that he is the one who killed the murder victims. All right, all right, you win. The vampires I killed are the people who have recently been murdered, Throtar finally confesses. The hospital staff and the police officers enter your hospital room. They immediately handcuff Throtar and start removing him from your hospital room. Okay, so that was the last action from the previous episode. The next part is going to be a blurb that I wrote so that we can transition from there to today's adventure. You are a detective named Jet Black. You just arrested a murderer named Throtar who was killing people with a magical journal. The magical journal mystically kills anyone whose name is written inside of it. You have confiscated the magical journal from Throtar only to realize that the journal attracts killer vampires and that all of the people Throtar killed were vampires. Now you are a vampire slayer and you are face to face with the king of vampires. You don't know the name of the king of vampires, so you're trying to learn their name so that you can kill them with your magical journal. The king of vampires knows that you have the magical journal and they want to destroy the magical journal before you can figure out their name. And then the AI added to that, you will have to use your wiles to trick the king of vampires into revealing their name, all while protecting yourself from being harmed by the vampiric monarch. So now that we've read all that, let me start the 30 minute timer and let's hop into today's adventure. Can I kill the king of vampires in 30 minutes or less? Let's find out. I'm going to say, you know that I am here to kill you with this magical journal. You can't stop me, so I wouldn't recommend trying. Just tell me your name so that we can get this over with. Okay. So I'm hoping that by being direct with the King of Vampires, I can get him to slip up. Maybe he gets too emotionally excited or too cocky. Something that I can exploit. You think that you're going to kill me with that book? Well, I'm not going to make it easy for you. You'll have to find out my name yourself, the Vampire King shouts. The Vampire King moves towards you with incredible speed. Hmm. Why, hello there, I'll say. <laughs> hmm. How do you know that I don't already know your name? Hmm. 
Yeah, like, okay, so that's like an interesting thing for me to say. I'm trying to get in his head. I'm trying to mess with him if I can. To get me closer to, like, the truth. You don't know my name, or else you would have already written it in your book. You aren't going to learn it tonight, either, the Vampire King replies. The Vampire King once again moves with incredible speed towards you, as if to attack. Okay, let's see. How do you know that the magic... Yeah, like, how do you know if the magical journal doesn't have a failsafe built in to protect me? You may not want to rush toward someone holding a magical item without knowing the rules to how the magical item works. I'm trying to get in his head. I feel like the more things that I say like this, the like more I can like mess with his mind. So let's see if that stops him in his tracks or if he fully goes for it. The Vampire King stops in his tracks and begins to think. He looks quite flustered. You may have a point there. Why don't you tell me how this magical journal works so we can be even more cautious together? The Vampire King suggests. I am willing to tell you everything you want to know about the magical journal, but only if you tell me your name. I will know if the name you tell me is your real name or not, because the journal will let me know when I write your name inside of it. Do we have a deal? I'll only tell you what you want to know if you tell me your real name. So there we go. I've essentially set up the idea of like, oh, the journal has some kind of failsafe to protect me, which is a lie to get the Vampire King not to kill me. And now that's created a mystery box that the Vampire King wants open. So now the Vampire King might be willing to trade his name for this mystery box that's essentially empty. You think that the King of Vampires may have been confused by your offer, but he agreed to it. You explain how the magical journal basically works to the Vampire King. He nods his head in understanding, but he does not look pleased. Hold on, hold on. He's confused by the offer, but agreed to it. So I'm not going to explain how the journal works. So to get rid of that part where it forces me to explain. If he agrees to it, then there we go. I'm going to say, since you have agreed to my offer, you must now tell me your name. I will then write your name in the journal. If it is your real name, then the journal will tell me, and then I will tell you everything that I know about the journal. If you tell me a fake name, then I won't tell you what you want to know. Tell me your name. Yeah, tell me your real name. Here we go. Mr. Rebox? Mm, yeah. <sighs> Mr. Rebox? Yeah. Uh, got that Mr. Rebox? All right, but hurry up. My real name is Count Gray. As soon as the Vampire King reveals his name, the magical journal begins to glow red. What the hell is this? What did you do to me? Count Gray shouts angrily. You quickly write 
Count Gray's name into the magical journal. Or at the very least, I should make it an attempt. You quickly attempt to write Count Gray's name in the magical journal. You say, don't freak out. I am going to write your name down in the journal to check to see if your name, if that is your real name. If it is, then I'll tell you everything that you want to know about the magical journal. Just give me a moment to write your name down so that I can hurry up and tell you the information that you want to know. Also, I didn't expect the journal to glow when he said his name, <laughs> so that freaked me out too. I was like, is it true that the book will tell me if that's his real name? Like, is that what just happened? Fine, but hurry up, Vampire Count Gray says, stepping back to give you some room. You open the magical journal to a page that is empty of names. You take the tip of your quill and write Count Gray's name in the book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, you are happy. Let's see. You take a moment to observe if Count Grey yeah is dying if Count Grey is the Vampire King's name like is the Vampire King's real name then they should immediately start dying If Count Grey isn't the Vampire King's name, like real name, then nothing will happen. Yeah, so I'm trying to see if he's going to die or not. You watch Count Grey as you finish writing his name in the book. Slowly he begins to shrivel into a husk and then crumple. Excuse me, and then crumble into dust. The red light that encompasses the magical journal increases in luminosity and temperature and burns your hand. It burns my hand. Ouch. Hmm. Okay. You stash the journal in your bag. And then you explain to the dead ashes of Count Grey the rules of the magical journal. Even though Count Grey is dead, you still made him a promise that you intend to keep. So you sit by his ashes and tell him everything you know about the magical journal. Yeah, so I wasn't lying to him. I did tell him I would tell him the secrets of the journal, but only after, like, he told me his real name. You tell Count Grey that he was a fool to trust you. You tell him, however, oh, sorry. You tell him how whenever someone writes their name inside of the magical journal, the journal lets you know who they truly are. If their name is written in the book with their true name, then it immediately kills them. <laughs> I like how JudgeBot says, I don't get why you're telling Count Grey this. You just killed him. You gained no points. It's because I'm being honorable. <laughs> I wasn't lying when I said that the book would let me know if that was like his real name or not. And I wasn't lying when I said that I was going to tell him the secrets of the magical journal. 
um, I just wanted to essentially make a trade with Count Grey um, in order to try and achieve both of our goals. See, that's the way that you get like interesting compromises with people, right? You essentially let someone know that something is bad for them. So then immediately they're cautious of the bad thing, right? Um, but then you tell someone something that makes them like interested or it makes them like want something, right? Like essentially you like implant a desire in someone's head and then you tell them that they have to do something risky in order to get what they want. And the risk is the thing that they're cautious of. So then if you can make them want something enough to take the risk, then it's enough to get them to like essentially doom themselves. What's really interesting about this situation is that the thing that they're cautious of, which is like, you know, if you get your name in the journal, you die, is like the reward and the risk at the same time. Because Count Grey is like, well, I'm not trying to like kill you and then be killed by the book. So he's like, I need to know how the book works in order to prevent myself from being killed by the book. And then I'm like, cool, if you give me your name, the book will let me know if that's your real name or not. And then I'll tell you everything you wanna know about the book. But Count Grey beforehand was like, I would never tell you my name because if I told you my name, then you'd kill me with the book. And I think it's Count Grey's misunderstanding of how the book works that really like helped me out. It's the fact that I just possessed more information in that situation so it allowed me to manipulate him. Like you guys at home may be like, why would he ever give away his name? It's probably because um, he doesn't know what all it takes to kill someone with the book. So he knew that I needed to know his name to kill him by writing his name in the book, but he may not have known that like, I was going to kill him when I wrote his name now. Like there might've been like more steps to killing someone with the book versus just learning if that's their real name or not. Because I imagine what Count Grey thought was going to happen is I was going to write his name in the book and then the book was going to say, yes, his name is Count Grey or something. And then I would have told Count Grey the secrets of the book and then Count Grey would have used that information to try and outgame me. But he essentially thought there was no way for him to outgame me until he knew that information and he thought acquiring that information wouldn't kill him. So it's fascinating, I guess. Um, I imagine you could also just say Count Grey is like an idiot. <laughs> That's true too, because I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is actually a really interesting scenario. I do feel like when Count Grey ran up to me as if he was going to attack me, um, I honestly didn't know if I was going to get away with it. It was the fail-safe thing that like really like came in clutch. The idea of saying like, you have no idea if, like, if you run up on me, if the book will just instantly kill you right then. Um, but this was really quick. I got the shit out of Count Grey. It's been like half the time. And I feel like that. And I feel like I've spent a lot of this time just like geeking out over like the adventure. I had fun. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think Count Grey was like too gullible? Do you feel like the Vampire King would have taken the risk that I was like bluffing? Or do you think the Vampire King would have known I was bluffing kind of thing and that he would have like acted around it? What would you have done if you were the Vampire King? I think that actually is like a really cool question. Um, would you have just tried to take the journal away from me? Not knowing if there was a fail safe because the fail safe thing is really nice. I do like that mystery box that I set up because then he doesn't know what to do. I essentially stole all of his options and I gave him only one option. And that one option that he had was to doom himself. So I would love to hear you guys' thoughts of what you would have done in Count Gray's shoes. I also would love to hear you guys' thoughts on what you would have done in my shoes. Would you have done the same thing that I did? Or would you have had a different idea of how to defeat Count Gray? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and on our Discord. Also, I made this video because a fan said, hey, I really liked part one. I would love to see a part two. 
And if you guys want to see a part three to this video, definitely let me know what would I possibly do in a part three? You know, uh, give me like a defined goal, make sure that it's like safe for work, but set up the seeds for what part three would be. And if you guys want to see it, I'll put it out on the channel. Also, I will just do safe for work scenarios with clear cut goals anyways, especially if they're like actioning. I really love like who would win battles where you face off against a really powerful foe using your own set of powers and you go on like crazy adventures. Uh, so if you have a safe for work scenario with a clearly defined goal that I can speed run in 30 minutes or less, definitely make sure that you share it in the comment section below or on our Discord. And make sure that you share this video with your friends. If you have a friend who's super into Death Note or really vibes with like vampire slaying stories or someone who's really into like battles of wits where characters aren't necessarily like fighting with their fists but they're fighting with their mind and with their words, uh, then I think they would definitely be a fan of this video. And if they are a fan of this video, they likely have their own super cool ideas for like scenarios and characters that I could interact with in future videos. Speaking of characters, um, I do a series called Jet Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunters, and currently we're in the middle of like a filler arc where all we do is uh, face off against characters that you guys create or characters from like your favorite series that are outside of Jet Starlight. Because the filler arc takes place in like a non-canon alternate timeline kind of thing. Um, so if you guys want to see um, a character that I created, Jet Starlight, face off against a character that you created or one of your favorite characters from a series that you really like, definitely make sure to post that in the comment section below or on our Discord. Uh, the main information I would need to know is the name of your character, their powers, their weaknesses, um, their appearance, and why they would want to fight my character. My character is essentially a god. They're the king of all monsters. Um, and they're only interested in two things. They like fighting really powerful opponents, and um, he loves his wife, Zaina. And he's also a monster hunter. That's a really big thing about him. So if you have any characters that you'd like Jet Starlight to fight, definitely make sure that you include all that information. A really important bit is that your character needs to be powerful, or Jet Starlight won't care about them. And also, since Jet Starlight is essentially a god, your character would need to be powerful just to stand a chance against Jet Starlight. And also, another really important part, because I feel like people underestimate this part, it's really important that your character have a reason to want to fight Jet Starlight. If the reason is, like, flimsy, then the fight may not go the way that you think, because your character might just give up, or Jet Starlight might just be able to convince them that fighting isn't really worth it. Um, an easy way to make a character make sense to want to fight Jet Starlight, this is just a tip to anyone who wants to submit a character to face off against him. Um, one of our fans created this thing called the Dark Star Squadron. Technically, the AI created the Dark Star Squadron, um, but one of our fans has started creating more members of the team. It's an organization that wants to kill false gods or beings that weren't born gods but became gods over time. So if you just want to like have your OC fight Jet Starlight, but you don't really know much about Jet Starlight or a good way to like make it make sense, just make your OC a member of the Dark Star Squadron. And automatically they have a motivation for wanting to kill Jet Starlight. Um, and if you want to make your character strong enough to fight Jet Starlight, um, like if you have a character in mind, but you don't know if they're powerful enough to really face off against Jet Starlight, Jet Starlight can regenerate. That's one of their like really good powers. Um, and Jet Starlight also has like certain levels of like reality manipulation kind of stuff. Um, but he doesn't like to use that in fights. So he focuses a lot more on using like elemental magic when he's fighting someone. Very often he'll make something out of fire or ice or something like that. So um, in order to make a character that can really like mess with Jet Starlight, like definitely like give him a challenge would be to have someone who can like negate magic or someone who has like the ability to counter his elemental abilities, um, especially people who can like 
limit your ability to regenerate or stop you from regenerating or something. Um, but I want to have really epic, like close battles with people. It's just recently people have been submitting characters that aren't too much of a threat to Jet Starlight. So the story doesn't really get to those like epic moments. So I'm just giving a few tips for those who would be interested in submitting characters. I also have another series called Ultimate Volition, and it's a tournament uh, superpower battle series where essentially um, you have two fighters uh, that are normally fighters that either I create, my friends create, or the fans create. Um, and each fighter has three powers, an offensive power for dealing damage, a defensive power for protecting from taking damage, and a special ability that's like a trump card, which you use in order to get out of like a sticky situation. It essentially lets you get like the upper hand in a fight. And they're fighting in a tournament called the Ultimate Volition Tournament, where the winner of the tournament gets granted one wish. If you want to submit a character for that in the comment section below or on our Discord, all you have to do is give me your character's name, their three powers, their appearance, and why they're fighting in the tournament. Again, knowing why they're fighting in the tournament is really important. Like, definitely let me know why. Uh, because that can be the driving force for, like, a story. Uh, because a lot of times when I do, like, these prompts that are based on fights, it's not just about fighting. A lot of times it has to do with, like, the characters' motivations and their grudges against each other and, like, why they're butting heads that, like, fuels the fight and makes it more interesting than people just hitting each other. I'm also an ultimate volition. Feel free to go hard. You can have really insane powers and ultimate volition, and it is really fun to have two characters that have really off-the-wall abilities facing off against each other. If you have trouble coming up with powers or you just want help, there's a power listing wikia that I like to use and whenever I'm like trying to research like different superpowers I never heard of. There's a random page button on that wikia that lets you just find random abilities from all sorts of things, movies, comic books, TV shows, anime, books, etc. So yeah, definitely make sure you check that out. Um, if you guys like daily AI Dungeon 2 videos, you're definitely in the right place. I upload AI Dungeon 2 videos to the channel daily, um, and I have a series where I post a new episode every day. It's the Jet Starlight and Xena Fairy Monster Hunter series that I mentioned before. But like I said, we're currently in a non-canon side story, like, filler arc. Um, but fans really dig it, because the whole point of that arc is to have direct fan interaction. The characters that you want to see fight Jet Starlight are the characters that I put into the story. So each episode, you get to see another character recommended by fans based off against Jet Starlight. Um, but if you want to get in on the fun and you want to learn more about Jet Starlight and who he is, I highly recommend checking out the series. Right now we have 53 episodes and we're currently in our fifth season. Um, and you can choose to watch the show however you want. You can jump around and watch whatever episodes in any order. Um, I'm not going to say you're always going to know what's happening if you jump around and you watch the episodes in any order. But, you know, that's something that you can choose to do. Um, you can skip seasons if you want to. Like, I'm sure it's something where the more you watch, the more you'll pick up on and understand. It, it definitely is that, but so is anything. Um, so if you want to go all the way back to the beginning, I have a complete series playlist where you can watch all 53 episodes so far. Um, if you want to, like, jump in on a particular season, you can definitely do that. Um, I have playlists for each and every individual season. Uh, so definitely make sure that you check those out as well. But yeah, um, I'm trying to see if there's like anything that I've like left out. Um, boom, boom, boom. My friend Seluxus, he used to go by Heart of Cards on YouTube. He's trying to do more AI Dungeon 2 content. Uh, so definitely make sure you check out his channel. He's trying to start up uh, like an AI Dungeon 2 ongoing series that he'll like upload regularly. Um, also, my friend uh, Emperor AP aka Aiden, aka Winslow. He runs a channel called The Empire of Eternia. He has an AI Dungeon 2 series that he's done. I'm not sure if he's still doing it. I hope so. Um, that is based on him trying to start his own nation, like his own country in AI Dungeon 2. Um, so it's about like a guy in the real world starting essentially from the bottom 
and trying to become the emperor of his own country by just recruiting people in his town. Um, so if you think that's cool, definitely make sure you check out his channel. Uh, my friend Kaylee, she doesn't do any AI Dungeon 2 content yet, but I think it'd be really cool if she did. She's a very creative person. Uh, she wants to do a series of like short films um, and she has shown interest in maybe potentially doing a short film based on like an AI Dungeon 2 adventure. So if that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend checking out her channel, Kaylee Creator. Um, my friend uh, John Mason, I believe his channel is called uh, No Sam Naj, which is just John Mason backwards. Uh, John spelled J-O-N and Mason spelled M-A-S-O-N. Uh, no Sam Naj. Uh, he's a really great artist. Um, he has a really like cool personality. Um, and he likes stuff that's like dark and like interesting. Um, it's, it's hard to explain, but I would recommend checking out his channel. Uh, if you like, if you like the videos you've seen him in, cause I, he's actually just in videos on my channel. Uh, we play games together quite often. Feel free to check out some of the John Mason videos on the channel. Um, if you like him there, you'll like him on his channel as well. Um, I don't think he has any AI Dungeon 2 content yet, um, but I think if he did make AI Dungeon 2 content, it'd be really good. So, why not hit up his channel? Smash like, smash subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to figure out who else I would like shout out. Um, I've, shout out like, I've shouted out a good few of my friends uh, who do YouTube content. Um, if I've left anybody out, I apologize. Uh, anyone who I left out, definitely check them out as well. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess here are some shout outs for people who I'm not necessarily like super close friends with, but people who I think are really cool on YouTube. Um, Comic Pop is a really cool, uh, comic book YouTube channel. Casually Comics is another one that I've been checking out recently. Um, you guys may be like comic books, but keep in mind, if you guys like my writing that I do for AI Dungeon 2, because essentially it's just a collaborative writing game where you write with an AI, a lot of my inspiration for stories comes from comic books, and I read comic book quite that, and I read comic books quite often. I'm planning on reading some Nightwing comics once I'm done recording this video. So, comics are cool. Just saying. Uh, so if you like this, probably like comic books. Just saying. Um, but Comic Pop and Casually Comics are really cool comic book channels. Cosmonaut Variety Hour is a really cool channel. Uh, if you like nerd stuff in general, gosh, if he made AI Dungeon Two content, it'd be great. Uh, definitely check him out. He recently hit a million subscribers. Congratulations, Marcus. Marcus is the name of the guy who runs that. I don't know him personally. Still want to give him a shout out though. Um, who's another channel that I really vibe with that I like really want to shout out? I watch a whole bunch of YouTube channels, but I'm trying to shout out people that I like really, really like. Donkey uh, is donkey, but spelled with a U instead of a O. Um, Donkey's really cool. He does some of my favorite like video game based content on YouTube. Uh, he can have videos that are like super silly and jokey. He can have videos that are like super serious reviews and he has stuff that's kind of in between. Well, that's all the time that we have. Uh, sorry that the adventure itself was really short. It's just the challenge wasn't particularly hard. Um, but thank you all for watching and thank you for staying tuned for so long. Uh, I essentially made half of this video just me being like subscribe and check out the channel and also check out these other creators uh but thank you all for watching if you guys like this video make sure to smash that like button favorite comment subscribe and ding 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 ring that notification bell be notified whenever we do these videos this is your friend your boy jet left one only logging out peace guys chicka gawa chicka bow